In this tutorial I will introduce how to work with space planning within Vasari with different object types and method. You could say there is two methods of working with masses regarding space planning. You get the same result in the end and the difference is that on the right here I have used and created new masses by going to model and create mass inside the project by just creating simple rectangles like shown here and then finish so we have these simple forms that we can play around with. The other method I have used parametric space objects I have created as a family and not created in the project. I have shown in another video how to create these space objects some of the difference, pro and cons, for either the family method or the in-place mass. With the families you have the option of putting more parameters into the object after you have used it because they are all made of the same family. So if I change something in this family it will change all the other families. Within the in-place mass I can of course make the same parameters as the family method but these are all unique, all of these masses are unique. So if I want to put some more parameters in, I need to go in to each of them to give these new parameters. Another very good thing with the family mass, that is it's easy to name them if you go to the project browser. In this case, the family name is space object, and then you can create different types before you start up the project. I knew in this project there were different kind of functions with these overall naming so I made them before I started with the space planning and when I wanted to use them I could drag them from the project browser into the project and then these objects already had which kind of type of function they were and then I could specify the color to have it more visual the different functions and the reason why I want to have names for different functions is when I model and plan the, the layout of these functions, it's easier to have them named so I know which type it is. If I instead have used the in-place mass method, as we can see here, these masks are just called mass and then a number, so I don't know which kind of function these have. If I want to change this, I need to go to the project browser, remember which name this object has, and right click and then say rename and give it a, a new name. So in this case the family mass is better. One of the big reasons why I want to have names on these masses is regarding the schedule so I can control the square meters. So I use the mass type to identify which kind of function it have, the space. And the mass family I only want to have as few as possible. That's why the mass family is also better because it's using the same family and then have different types for the different functions. And that we can also see in the project browser. If we for example using the in-place mass it will create a lot of masses in the project browser instead of having just one family with different types. Other differences between the mass family and the in-place mass is that it's easier to change level for the mass families. Maybe I should mention that these mass families I have created so it's actually have the same editing possibility as the in-place mass. If I have the object selected up in the ribbon, I can say edit work plane and change the level it is hosted to. So instead of level 1, it could be level 4 and OK, and then it will move up to level 4, as we can see here. And then up here I of course can change the dimension of the mass family. If I want to do similar thing with the in-place mass, like selecting it, I don't get the option of changing the level. I could of course go to a left view for example and then remodel the object in this way or even move it. But it's not that easy to do actually. And when you want to use the models for energy simulation then it's very important they fit to the levels. Of course I could use the align tool, say align to the level like this and lock it. But this object is still hosted on the level I created it. So when I go in and say edit in place it pops down because it's still related to the level I model this mass from in this case level 1 
So you have to be careful when you use this in place mask method. If I should do it right, I should select the object within the editing mode and change the host level to that level I want to move the object up to. But when I'm doing this I cannot see the square meters and stuff like that, so it's not that flexible. To see the square meters I need to say finish. So it's easy to use align to levels or other objects with the in place. That is a limitation with the mass family. If I show it over here with the mass family, select the object here, say left view, and let's say I want to have top of this mask to go to this level and try to use a line, line to level, and the top of this one. Then this happened. Because the object is more stable, it's not reacting on these align functionalities. That's a little bit annoying, but there's some pro and cons for, for the different method. If I want to do it vertically, like say I want to have it aligned to this face, it do the same thing. And that doesn't happen for the in-place mask. If I go over here and do the same, I want to align to this face, to this one, then it just extend. So if I want to change the mask family size, I need to drag in the shape handles or type in the dimension in the properties. Seen in this example where I have used both the mask families and in-place families because it's not always possible to only use one of the method. I would say that if you have something that repeats like these round shaped here, that is the same, it's just the length of the shape and the depth that is changing, then it is useful to use the mask family. But if you have some more specialized, if you look at this from the above instead, like this shape for example, that is not parallel, then I would say it's more useful to use the in-place method as I also have done here. Another thing that is also better with the in-place mask, that is you have the other geometry and the context in the same modeling environment that you don't have in the mask family. So if I select this one, we can see this is a mask family, a type of open office, and the green one here is a in-place mask that have the function of restrooms and storage. And if I say edit in place, it consists of different circles with different center position and different parameters because it's so unique so it's important to have the context geometry it not give any sense to make this into a mass family and to show how it the other family look like the mass family and select it and say edit family here I create some simple parameters controlling the start position and the end position with different kind of parameters so depending on how the project look like or the concept of it, it can be necessary to use the in-place mask in combination with the mask family. This one can also see here in the schedule where I have the mask family. So I have something called mask object round. There's a mask family and this one here is created of an in-place mask. And the method I'm using for the in-place masks is that I'm calling the type the same name as the family name. With family I cannot have the same name for different types. So I need to have one, two and three. And here we can see I have the same family type name so I can filter it in the schedule as we can see in this row. And the reason for this, that is I can calculate the total of the diff function and compare it to the space program. This is a simplified space program. And in the schedule here we can see when I calculate the total I get pretty close to the demand. To summarize, in this tutorial I have explained how to use different methods of using mass families or use in-place families and the naming, why that is important regarding the square meter control by using schedules. In other videos I will go in more detail to how to work with these different types of modeling technique and schedule creation.